Good morning, class, or good afternoon, or good evening, whenever you're watching this. Welcome back to pre-algebra. So you guys have already turned in your tests online. Hopefully those went all right, and I'm going to try and grade those. Um, we might have to email back and forth to see if we can get a good scan for those, because there's a decent chance I may not be able to read your work. So as you're looking at those, make sure that you are very clear in the work that you have. So today, we're going to go ahead and go through lesson 10.1 in your pre-algebra book. So go ahead, grab your pre-algebra book, pause the video if you need to, and uh, we're going to take some notes, then we're going to go ahead and do some practice problems and definitions, and then from there, you guys are going to work on your homework and then turn them in online. I will be releasing the answer key to the problems for each of these online and you're gonna to have to check your answers correct them before you turn them in so don't turn them in until after you have finished your corrections for the lesson all right let's go ahead and get started so what we have in front of us is called uh, two parallel lines with a line intersecting them that line intersecting them is called a transversal Question is, we've got all these different lines and different relationships. How do we figure out with these eight angles, what are the relationships between these different pieces? So first, you can see I've drawn right along the lines here on the piece of paper that show, okay, wait a second, I see that. That's line L, excuse me, line M and line M. And those are parallel lines. So parallel lines have no points that intersect. Lines M and M are parallel in this situation. So that means that lines M and M, the way that we would write that is we will say M is parallel to N. So when we're looking at that, that notation means that line M is parallel to line M, excuse me, N. Now that's different if I was to draw two lines, let's say I'll call them line, um, we'll call it line J, because that's, I'm Mr. Jacobs. So this is line J, and this is line K. If I told you that these two were at a right angle here, that means that these two lines are perpendicular. Perpendicular means that they're at a right angle, and the way that we would write that is J is perpendicular to K. Handy little notational difference there as we're looking at those. Now, perpendicular lines, so uh, in case you're wondering how to spell that, that's P E R. P-E-N-D-I-C-U-L-A-R. Perpendicular. Hooray. Now let's go back up here. If we look at our transversal, that's our line going through our parallel lines, we see that there's some interesting things going on here. So the first thing you notice is you say, wait a second, Mr. Jacobs, what's these little, little arrow things you drew on there? Should I draw those on? Yes. So let me show you something kind of fun. If I take a line and I draw this line here and I draw this line here and I put those two little things there, you know what that means? These two lines are parallel. I'm just bad at drawing. So that notation is going to help us know are two lines parallel to each other. The other thing that you may have noticed or you may have had before is as we look at this, huh, okay, this is a straight line and this is a straight line, as are the other pieces from here to here. So that means these two are going to add up to what? They're going to add up to 180 degrees. Those two angles are called supplementary angles. Now, 
Now supplementary angles add to 180 degrees. Now if we go back to our perpendicular one, our perpendicular one, let's say I was to put this over here and I called this angle L, uh, oh no, we'll call it angle A and this angle B. These two angles are called complementary angles. Complementary angles because they add up together. So angle B plus angle A add to 90 degrees. That's called complementary. So in complementary angles, we're adding to 90 degrees. You can go ahead and give yourself a compliment for getting that. <laughs> Mr. Jacobs is hilarious. Now, as we look at this then, what else can we understand from this diagram? So if we go back, there's a lot of vocabulary here and there's some really fun relationships. So if we go to the top here, I'm going to go ahead and highlight a couple things for you. So interior angles are three, four, five, and six. So all of these angles here are called interior angles. That means you guessed it. The other angles over here, so that's just for those of you keeping track at home, three, angle four, angle five, and angle six. That means that the other angles, one, two, eight, seven, and eight, are all exterior angles. And you can see this on page number, what number is this in your textbook? 492, page 492 in your textbook. So as I look at this, the exterior angles are angle number one, angle number two, angle number seven, and angle number eight. And you're saying, how do I remember that? How will I ever remember that? Well, the interior angles are inside the parallel lines. Exterior angles are exterior to the parallel lines. Oh, that's, that's kind of handy and nice. Okay, now here's where it gets fun. So I'm gonna redraw this. So we're getting a little messy on this page. So we'll, we'll draw it down here. If we look at this, and we have one, two, so here are our two parallel lines, even though they're not too pretty, you know that they're parallel. Why? Because I told you. And then that's also a line. And we'll redraw these, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Alternate exterior angles are on opposite sides of parallel uh, uh, of excuse me opposite sides of the parallel lines. So number one and seven are opposite exterior angles. And then eight and two are also opposite exterior angles. Here's the fun part about opposite exterior angles. If we look at this, hmm, 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 hmm. Well, we'll find out more about them in a second. Corresponding angles are in the same position. So, so also, sorry, alternate interior angles so four and six and three and five, these are alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles, and that's not interion, it's interior. And then alternate exterior angles. Are you ready for this? These two alternate interior angles and opposite exterior angles are congruent.
That means, oh man, those are the same angle measure. All right, fun last thing. You're saying, I was already having lots of fun, Mr. Jacobs. I don't need any more. No, 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 no. You do. You need more fun. It's okay. If we go to our next one, so we'll redraw it yet again. One more piece. So if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one and five, notice how this looks identical to this. So we can match up the ones that are in the same position. Those are called corresponding angles. These are on the same position on the parallel lines in relation to the transversal. In the same position on the parallel lines in relation to the transversal. And corresponding angles, it turns out, are also congruent. All right, let's do a little bit of fun, awesome stuff with this. Actually, before we do some fun, awesome stuff, and eh, let's do it. So if I give you this transversal right up here, and I told you that angle one is, Oh, and these are parallel lines. Let's make sure we have that. I told you angle one is 30 degrees. That means we can write this right here that angle one is 30 degrees. Oh, wait a second. Angle five is also 30 degrees. Why? Because they're corresponding angles. We also know that alternate exterior angles are the same. So that means 30 degrees because one and seven are alternate exterior angles. And we know that alternate interior angles are also congruent. Hey, look, five and three are alternate interior angles. That means if angle one is 30 degrees, all those other angles are also 30 degrees. Wow, okay, neat. You're really not that impressed. I, I can see you rolling your eyes through YouTube um, because I have magical teacher powers as I've made that hard to see. But wait a second. You've noticed something. You say, Mr. Jacobs, one, you drew that horribly. How could that be a 30 degree angle? You're right. The relation that's shown here is kind of backwards actually. That said, as long as I tell you angle one is 30 degrees, you have to follow it that angle one is in fact 30 degrees, even though it doesn't look like it's 30 degrees. It looks like it's way bigger than 30 degrees. All right, two, if we look, hey, 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 this is a line. That means if one is 30 degrees, two, wait a second, this plus that has to add up to 180 because those two angles are supplementary. That means that two must be ba, 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 150 degrees. If two is 150 degrees, guess what? Well, alternate exteriors are, so eight is also 150 degrees. Ooh, 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 ooh. Corresponding angles will also be 150 degrees. And, Alternate interior, so four and six, will also be 150 degrees. Wow. So just by knowing one of the angles, we can use these different relationships to find all of the angles in this transversal. That's pretty awesome. Now, when we have this, we're gonna take a look now and say, hey, wait a second, I noticed something. Because you're so smart. These two are right across each other, and these two are right across each other. Huh. 
Well, it'd almost be nice if there was something, a rule. Is that always true? Where if we have two angles that are across on either side of an intersecting line, maybe that has a special name. Guess what? It does. So that name is called the vertical angle. So if I have one, two, three, four. So one and three in this case are called vertical angles. They form two pairs of opposite angles called vertical angles. So angle one and angle three are vertical angles. And angle uh, two and angle four. Now that's an and, not a plus. are also vertical angles. And get this, vertical angles are always congruent. V-E-R-T-I-C-A-L. Man, spelling is hard. The way we would write that mathematically is we would use this fun little symbol. You use this for our congruent symbol. So we would say angle one is congruent to angle three. All right, let's do a couple practice problems with this. So if we're looking, this used to be a maple tree, by the way, that was in my front yard. It makes me happy. So let's look if I have a setup. Hmm. So uh, let's go ahead and take this right here. So if we take these two parallel lines, we have a transversal going through them. And I told you that this is uh, 130 degrees. Guess what? 130 degrees. And then we can use our alternate opposite, uh, excuse me, we can use our corresponding angles. Say this is also 130, 130. And then all we need to know is that these two are supplementary and we've got the rest of this figured out. 50 degrees, 50 degrees, 50, 50 really 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 fast as we're looking at this now let's do this with a little bit of algebra let's say if I have angle ABC oops that says triangle <laughs> so angles ABC and FGH are complementary so the way that we write this is we'll say the measure of angle ABC, that's what that little M there means, is the measure of angle ABC plus the measure of angle uh, FGH. That should probably be capital. If they are complementary, that means that they equal 90 degrees. Now, what if I told you that the angle of ABC is X plus eight and the angle of FGH is X minus 10. So if this is X plus eight plus X minus 10, we can solve that and see, okay, we're gonna combine like terms. That gives us two X. Let's get that straighter for you at home. Minus two equals 90 plus two plus two. Two X equals 92. Therefore X equals 46. Are we done? No, we're not. Because I wanna know actually what are the, the measures of these angles. So for ABC, x plus 8 then so the measure of a angle a b c is going to be 46 plus 8 and the measure of f g h is going to be move this down here did it again x minus 10. 
So in this case, FGH is going to be 46 minus 10, which is 36 degrees. And then if we go here, we're going to get 46 plus 8, which in this case is, well, I guess not in this case all the time, it's 54. Now we can double check, is 54 plus 36 add to 90? Because these two are complementary angles, it certainly should. Let's do another one, and let's do a little bit more algebra this time. So what if I told you that I have a transversal and I told you that I've got to put these arrows to show that these are lines not line segments and that they go on and on and on and on. This side here is 2x and this side over here is x minus 10. Ooh, we're a little scared now. How can I solve that? How is that possible? Well, here's how it's possible. The way that we do this is we go ahead and take it and we say, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I see, huh, 2x, it, these two are corresponding angles from here to here. So that means that this also must be 2x. And then these two angles are on the same line, so those will have a supplementary relationship. Supplementary means they will add to 180 degrees. Go ahead, give this a try now that you know that information. Pause the video here, try it, and see if you can get your solution. So now that you've done it, let's go ahead and take a look at it. You should have 2x plus x minus 10 equals 180 degrees as your setup. That gives us 3x minus 10 equals 180. 3x equals 190 then. And then if we do that division real quick, we get, divide each side by 3, x equals 63 and one third. Kind of fun. So with that, you guys need to go ahead and start in on your homework assignment. So your homework assignment for this lesson is on page 496 through 497, 10 through 25, and then 27 to 32. Did you see how I did that with movie magic? All right. Go ahead and turn those in once you've gone over your answers and corrected those. And we'll have another lesson for you in a couple days. Thanks. Have a great day. Remember, don't be afraid. God is with us.